Good morning, friends. Sunday morning, nine o'clock. Welcome to the Deep Things of God with Brother Mike. I'm sitting here in my uh, den in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to HardcoreChristianity.com. Uh, today, uh, interesting Bible study on how to get miracles from God. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And believe it or not, it's a lot easier than you think. It's quite a, <laughs> quite shocking. So I hope you'll go to the uh, website. Rem remember, every Sunday, of course, I'm on at 9 o'clock in the morning. Also, two, every Tuesday at 6 p.m., I have a Zoom deliverance service. I post that on my uh, Facebook page, Michael W. Smith. And this Tuesday, also, uh, the face the uh, Zoom is at 6 p.m. Pacific and Arizona time. And I have a question and answer period. And then after that, we do uh, some prayer time. So don't forget about Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please remember the Zoom broadcast with Brother Rick and the ministry team. Uh, they are on Wednesdays at the same time, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, by the way, the time change is about to occur this, this uh, Sunday. I believe it's 2 in the morning. So that will change a little bit. So uh, don't forget about we got two services on Zoom every week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Also, we have two live services in Phoenix that are broadcast on multiple platforms, including our YouTube teaching channel. Just put in youtube.com slash House of Healing AZ. And you're there every uh, Thursday and Friday night. That's at 7 p.m. Arizona and Pacific time. And again, that's about to change with the time change. So we've got plenty of things available for you to learn the deep things of God. I'm going to do my best today to share with you some very important things. If you would, turn with me to Matthew chapter 8. I call these the miracle chapters. And you'll find some fascinating things about the Word of God and how easy it is to get a miracle from God. The devil wants to complicate it. And he wants to make it very difficult, and he wants you to use your mind to try and figure it out. That is a recipe for disaster, okay? Miracles come from childlike faith, from the Spirit, man, through the Word of God, with love. So all you need to get a miracle from God is childlike faith and love. You add the Word of God to that mix, you win. You can't possibly lose. Check it out. Uh, Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus came down from the mountain, multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper worshiping him and saying to him, Lord, if you will, you can make me whole or make me clean. Now, that Greek word for if you will is the Greek word phalo. And it means if you want to. Many people believe that God is able to do something, has the power to do something, but they question his willingness to do it. And so what the Holy Ghost is doing here, by putting this uh, incredible story in the Bible, what he's doing here is telling you, I want to. I want to. And you know that the Son and the Father want to because Jesus said, I only do those things I see my Father doing. I only speak those things I hear my Father saying. So what happened here was a dying leper approaches him and Father, looking through Jesus' eyes, sees him and said, boy, I would love to heal that guy. Jesus heard him say it and said, says to the leper as he's walking up, Jesus put forth his hand, verse 3, and touched him, again, demonstrating for us that the laying on of hands to transfer the anointing is a very productive method of seeing people healed. You don't have to lay hands on everybody every time, obviously, but some, sometimes it requires the laying on of hands, and this is one of them. He lays his hand off on a communicable disease, the Holy Ghost blocking the disease and destroying it, no fear of being transferred to Jesus, and he says, I will 
be clean. And the Greek word again, same Greek word, thelo, I want to be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And the man then was told to go give a testimony of his healing. Can you believe it? That's how uh, amazing it was, how easy it was to get a miracle from God. But you'll notice something here. The leper came to Jesus. Jesus didn't run him down. Same is true for you. You got to come in with childlike faith. You got to come in with love. You got to come in with determination. You got to come in with perseverance. Now, how do you know my, that, Mike? That it didn't say that in the verse. Well, I've been a counselor for 40 years and I know people better than most people. And if people are my business, people are my job. This leper was not even supposed to be out of the valley of the lepers. Okay, they kept them separate from society, they got kicked out of society. They didn't live in houses or in cities or villages. No, they kicked them out because for obvious reasons, it's a communicable disease. So this leper had insurmountable determination to leave seclusion or quarantine, to use, to use uh, our term nowadays, fight his way through rejection and fear of others. Everybody who saw a leper back in the day, would stone them for obvious reasons. It's a communicable disease. He fights through his fears. He fights through the people. He, he fights through his exhaustion and his sickness, and he walks all the way from wherever he lived to hunt down Jesus. And you can see there that miracles require your cooperation and your determination. You've got to be like the dying leper. You've got to be able to get to Jesus and be determined without a question or a doubt that you're going to push through. That's what he did. And then Jesus said to him, I want to be clean. Can you imagine that? That's how easy it was to get a miracle. Why? Because Jesus saw the leper's faith faith. He heard him speak. He saw the determination in the leper. He saw what he had sacrificed to get to Jesus. Bang. It's a miracle. Miracle number two in the miracle chapters, Matthew chapter eight and nine. Matthew chapter eight, Jesus came to Capernaum, which was his headquarters, that was his new home. He had moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. And there he is, riding down the pathway is a bunch of soldiers. He looks up and he sees a centurion, a centurion. And he was begging him, it says. He was begging. So here you say the same situation or a similar situation as the dying leper. You see a centurion who is making sacrifices and is determined to get to Christ and is pushing himself and making an effort through determined domination to get to the living Christ. And he says to Jesus, my servant is laying at home. He is grievously tormented. Greek word for a servant there is pice. It means a young child. So it could have been a servant child or it could have been his son. We don't know. But it says he's lying at home, sick of the palsy. Paralyticus is a Greek word. It means a spinal cord injury. And it says he is grievously tormented. The Greek word is basanizo. It means to be tortured. He's being tortured. So this sounds like some kind of demonic activity on top of a medical condition. And Jesus said to him, Without a hesitation. You see how easy this is to get a miracle. He saw the centurion's determination and his faith. It was demonstrated in his behavior. And the response is, I will come and heal him. That was it. There was no conversation, uh, no intercessory prayer. Nobody was going through a bunch of religious incantations. Nothing. 
As soon as Jesus saw that this centurion meant business, okay, to use a slang phrase, he saw it. He says to him, okay, let's go. Let's get it done. It's done. Let's go. And the centurion then blows the mind of God. And I'm praying that God will trigger you to blow his mind today. I, I want you to do that to the Lord. I want you to do something that he's not expecting. I want you to do something freaky. The centurion blows Jesus' mind. He says, listen, I'm not worthy for you to even come, come under the roof in front of my house. That's, that's what the Greek word meant. It didn't mean the roof overhead. It meant the overhang in front of the house. I'm not worried. Don't even come up to the steps of my house. Don't even, don't even do that because I'm not worthy of it. Hekanos is a Greek word that means I don't deserve it. Now notice this, the centurion coming to Christ doggedly determined with a broken heart and humbleness and childlike faith. See that? Those things trigger a miracle all the time. He says, listen, I am a man who is under authority. He says, and I have men under my authority, pecking order. He says, I tell them to do this, they do it. I tell them to go there, they go there. Look at the guys behind me. I told them to saddle up and come here when I heard about you. You know, the centurion was kind of strange. There were some proselytes back then. There were some people who were Romans who did believe in the one and only true God. He was one of them. He'd been raised around Jews, and he'd been to the synagogue as a kid, and he'd recognized the scroll of Isaiah with all the prophecies of the Moshiach. And the Messiah was going to have certain traits. And the centurion knew it. He knew what those traits were. And he said, the stories I'm hearing about this Yeshua from Nazareth, that has got to be the Moshiach. That's it. So we're saddling up. He brought a team with him, and they bolted out. And they came to Jesus and said, hey, my son, my servant, is." being tortured. Jesus said, I will come in healing. The Satoria says, I don't deserve for you to come on my roof, under my house, anywhere near my house. Don't even come in my neighborhood because I know you have the authority to heal him by only speaking the word. Okay. Now, this is the Lagos word is all of God's word and a rhema word is a portion of the word. Lagos, Rhema, right? And this is what the guy's exercising here. He's saying, I am a man under authority. I have people under authority to me. I tell them to go and come. They go and they come. You have authority over the spirit world. You have authority over demons. You have authority over sickness and disease and addiction and death. You have the authority, like I have authority over these soldiers. Go here, go there. They go here, then they go there. No problem. He says, just speak the word only. Can you imagine that? He says, speak the word only, <laughs> and my servant will be healed. Utterly unbelievable. Give me some lagas. Give me the word. Just speak the word only. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. And here's what's shocking about it, and here's what I hope you'll do today. Verse 10 says, Jesus was marveling at the man. The Greek word is thamazo. It means to be shocked. This Gentile who's not even Jewish, makes a statement of utter and pure faith and belief. Jesus' mouth drops open. He can't believe it. He is stunned. He says, I have not found anybody in Israel. Okay, he says Israel that has the faith of this Gentile. He wasn't even Jewish. Unbelievable. 
absolutely unbelievable. And Jesus was just stunned. That's what it is. You know what? I want you to stun God today. I want you to pick out two or three of the rottenest things in your life. Let's pick them out right now. Could be a sickness. Could be a relationship. Could be whatever it is. Pick it out. And I want you to just simply take the logos and go for it. I want you to stun God this morning. Instead of complaining and griping and having doubts and having unbelief, questioning things, what if, what if, what if this, what if that, but this, but that. No, 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 not today. You're not going to if or but anything. You're just going to believe, period. And you're going to cause the good Lord to drop his mouth open. Jesus turns to the people that are following. These are Messianic Jews. These are Jews. Okay. He says, listen, many shall come from the east and the west to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and in the kingdom of heaven. Many will come there. But the children of the heaven, kingdom of heaven, the children of the kingdom of God shall be cast out into outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Translation, they're going to go to hell. Most Jews that die go to hell. For the last shall be first, the first shall be last. The centurion, who was never supposed to be in heaven because he was a Gentile, made it, and the Jews, who were supposed to go to heaven, didn't, they went to hell. He says to the centurion, go your way, ready, as you have believed. Remember, miracles are based on some type of foundation. Belief in God. The Greek word is pistuo. It's a Greek verb, and it means to step out in faith, having zero doubts and zero unbelief. You have no doubt and you have no unbelief, period. You simply step out in faith, pistuo. You're doing something, demonstrating the faith in your heart. This is the teaching God's trying to show you. What's the Holy Ghost doing right now? He's trying to uncomplicate miracles for you. That's exactly what it is. It's unbelievable. It's uncomplicating how this system works. Okay? Because the simplicity of Christ is the key. When you start factoring in pastors, preachers, teaching, you know, degrees from seminaries and Bible colleges, Christianity gets all jacked up. Once you go to the Logos, you can't lose. Once you simplify the gospel, you win. It's in the bag. You're killing it. It's yours. And that's what the centurion did. That's what the leper did. They just simplified it. They simplified it. They believed. They fought their way through adversity. Bang. They got a miracle. Oh, oh just like that. And it says the Saturian immediately went home. And it says the servant was healed in the same hour, within the same hour. So this centurion didn't live that far away from where Jesus was in Capernaum, okay? Now, to give you an idea how incredible the story is, uh, check this out. I, ha I had this printed up for you originally, but the problem is I, f I couldn't pick up the order because I forgot my password. But anyway, I decided to write it out here. Here is a Roman legion. It varied between 3,000 and 6,000 soldiers, but a regular legion was 6,000 soldiers right here. They were supervised by 60 centurions. Each centurion supervised 100 soldiers, and a cohort was 10 supervising above centurions. There was 10 of them per legion. Above that was six tribunes. There were six tribunes above a legion. I don't know if you can see that. I wish my printing had come through. I got to start remembering these passwords. And above the tribunes, of course, the 
like the United States, the president of the United States is in charge of the military. Let that sink in. But a emperor, the emperor was in charge of the military. And the emperors of Rome always gave the military anything they wanted because, for obvious reasons, if there was going to be a coup, the military would be behind it and would obviously kill the emperor. So they always made sure the soldiers were happy, just want to be happy. Then in Matthew chapter 8, the miracle chapters, Matthew 8 and Matthew 9, here we go again. Jesus later went over to Peter's house. And his mother-in-law was dying. And she had what the Bible says, uh, uh, pureso. Uh, pureso is a skyrocketing fever, a fever that's getting super bad, super bad. If it gets too bad, obviously, you know what happens. Your, your organs shut down, the patient dies. Jesus went in, and it says, once again, he laid hands on her. Notice the centurion, he did not lay hands on him. Okay? You don't have to lay hands on somebody all the time to have them heal, but it does work sometimes when you need healing. There's no problem. Either way works. Faith is the operating factor. Greek word, pistis, to believe with no doubts and no unbelief. Verse 15, he touched her. There it is. He touched her hand. He just reached over, you know, she's laying on the cot there. She's uh, moments from death. Her fever is skyrocketing, Carissa. And he reaches over and he holds her by the hand. That's a beautiful scene, don't you think? Yeah, what, what is it? Jesus was the greatest counselor of them all. i I'm a, I'm a been a counselor for 40 years. I was a secular counselor for 25 years. And I was excellent at it. My skill level as a counselor is top of the line. My ability to counsel people uh, allowed me to never see anybody ever cured. I was a secular counselor for 25 years. I never had anybody cured. It's unbelievable. I made, I made a lot of money off of them, you know, the miracle of insurance, and never cured anybody. Okay. And again, I was a highly skilled, highly skilled counselor. Couldn't cure anybody. Okay, the Holy Ghost is the greatest counselor in the universe, period, bar none. No one questions it. And here he is counseling, so to speak, and he reaches over. I've done it myself. Just held somebody's hand as a sign of, of love and care and concern and compassion. And he touched her hand, and guess what left her? <laughs> yeah. It says the fever just gone. There it is. Toward us. Disappeared. She goes right back to normal. And she got up and ministered to them. Yeah. I mean, they were exhausted from healing all these people over in Capernaum. They'd been walking a long time and they needed lunch. So she gets up and fixes the lunch. See, when you get healed, make it a, th make it a mindset. Make it a determination that you're going to serve God for the rest of your life. You're not going to just get healed and go back to your secular life or your sinful life. No, that's not going to happen. You're going to get delivered from demons. You're going to get healed in your body. You're going to get healed in your mind. And it's going to be simple this time instead of everybody complicating it. And after you're done, you are going to serve your Heavenly Father through the Lord. And that's what you're determined to do. And then guess what happened? The normal thing that happens. I get contacted hundreds of emails a week. I have on my, on Facebook, I have a special group on Facebook called, Facebook group called Blessings. In that group, I post all, many of the miracles that are happening at the Arizona Deliverance Center. And at hardcorechristianity.com, I post the miracles there. And I usually post a picture with it. I don't mention anybody's name. I do things anonymously. I write it so that you can't figure out who it is. But those miracles on the blessings group have given people, uh, it's almost like advertising. People contact me 
I get hundreds of emails a week. I send out the miracle list, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I send that out dozens of times a week. I send out Zoom broadcasts, Tuesday and Wednesdays, dozens of times a week. Um, but the miracles, the moving of the Holy Ghost, 100% of the miracles and healings and deliverances are caused by the Spirit of the Lord. 0% are caused by me. I, I couldn't heal anybody if my life depended. I can't heal myself. I recently had to have surgery. I mean, if I could heal myself, I would have never gone in for surgery. But verse 16, the miracles of the Holy Ghost and God's Son attract a crowd. Here it is, verse 16. When the evening came, they brought to him many who were possessed by devils. This is the King James Version. The Greek word is daimonizomai. It means to be under the control in greater or lesser degree of a spirit. So everybody who is infected with demons uh, is under the control of that spirit at different levels. Some demons are stronger than others. Some of them are weaker. Some of them have different skills. Some of them cause different sicknesses, different illnesses, different mental illnesses. Demons are various in their content, content and in their personality. This uh, translation here is very poor. It should never be used. King James, he, they use the word possessed. Okay, Very, very, very few people, just a minute, minute amount, are possessed by demons. Years ago, I used to have a prison and a jail ministry in the state of Arizona. I would travel around to prisons uh, ministering in their chapels, and God, wow, it was unbelievable. I had deliverance services going all the time around the state. But uh, included in my Department of Corrections card, I used to have a card. Actually, I still have that card. It's hanging in my office, but it's not valid anymore. I got kicked out. But anyway, that card included the state hospital which is down on Van Buren in Phoenix, the state hospital. Okay? I saw people possessed by demons at the state hospital. Possession means that they just take over everything. They're, they're just in total control. The vast majority of sinners and Christians are not possessed by demons. In fact, Christians can't be possessed by demons. A Christian cannot be possessed by demons. They can be infected in their body because of a physical illness or in their mind causing a mental illness, but they cannot be possessed by demon. That's, that's not possible. Don't let anybody ever tell you that. Christians are not possessed by demons. Infected, like having the flu, yes, 100%. Possessed, absolutely not. And here it says, many people who were daimonizomite, daimonizomite, under the control of spirits to varying degrees, and he cast out the spirits with his logos, word, and he healed all that were sick, okay? Now, that is showing us that there's a difference between a medical condition and a con medical condition caused by a demon. Not everything is demons. Okay, so if you have someone that needs to be healed, you can't cast demons out of them so they can get healed. You pray for healing and then the Holy Spirit heals them. If somebody has an illness caused by demons, you can't pray for healing. You need to do deliverance so the person can be healed. Okay, I have a book I wrote called Atonement Healing that it bifurcates all of the healings in the New Testament. I go right down the list for you, explaining it. Some things are medical, some things are deme demonic. Okay? Not everything's a demon. And it says here, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet. Okay, and that's obviously. Isaiah. Esaias is the Septuagint's translation of 
Isaiah's Hebrew name. That's from the Septuagint. Isaiah the prophet, he said, himself took our infirmities. That's the Greek word, asthenia. It means our weaknesses. And it says he bare our sicknesses. Sicknesses. Nasus is the Greek word for sicknesses there. It means diseases. You know, leukemia, can't, different forms of cancer, okay? Viruses, bacteria, diseases, sicknesses. He bore them, it says. Bore them. Bastazo. This Greek word means to lift something up and carry it off. He bastazo. He lifted up and carried off our sicknesses. He lifted up and carried off our diseases. How do we know that? Because Peter's mother-in-law was dying with a disease that was causing an accelerating fever. And he touched her hand lovingly and showed his compassion to those around him. And she instantly, the disease was gone. <laughs> you can't lose with this system, friend. Matthew chapter 8 is the miracle chapter. You cannot lose with this thing. You can't lose. Now let's go down to verse 23. Here's another miracle. This is when Jesus entered into the ship, his disciples followed, and it says there rose a great tempest in the sea. What in the world does that mean? Oh, it was a storm or a hurricane. No. A seismos, a seismos is a tsunami. That's an earthquake under the ocean that causes the sea to look like it's in a hurricane, but it is not. The waves are so big and powerful, they cause a wind. So it looks like a storm, but it's actually a tsunami. Tsunami, pardon me. And it says it occurred in the sea. And it says the ship was covered with waves, okay? meaning they were going to die. It was going to be capsized. They were all going to drown. But Jesus, having perfect pistis or faith and full assurance that what God had stated, he was able to perform, just like he told Abraham. Jesus knew he was protected. So he saw in logs in the bottom of the ship, unbelievable, in the middle of a tsunami, chilling, kicking back, and the disciples came to him in an obvious panic, saying, look, uh, we're about ready to die. We're about ready to be destroyed. The Greek word is apollomy. And Jesus said to them, why are you fearful? Now, this is the Greek word that was mistranslated. In fearful, it should be cowardly. Delos, it's a Greek adjective. Why are you acting like cowards, Delos? You remember Paul told Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That was also mistranslated. That was also the Greek word, Delia. The adjective is uh, Delos. It means cowardice. Cowardice will block. Every miracle you ever hope to have from God, you will never receive it. Fear and cowardice are two demons that work together. They always work together. Fear, Greek word phobos, delia, cowardice. They always work together. Here's how it works. The fear demon gives you the, the initial adrenaline rush of shock and awe. Boom, you're scared. The coward demon makes you timid and shy so that you won't seek help. So they both work together, keeping the person in total bondage. Jesus says to him, why are you acting like cowards, O ye of little faith? When your faith drops, cowardice accelerates. It's like a kid on a teeter-totter. 
they don't have teeter totters anymore, I don't think. But when I was a kid, one guy would sit at this end, the other side, and you would go up and down like that. And then if one of the kids was cold blooded, he would go down and then jump off of it, and you would crash to the ground. Remember that? Yeah, that happened to me several times. I wasn't all that popular in grade school. I'm very popular now, obviously, but when I was in grade school, I wasn't working. I used to get the teeter totter. Boom. That's what it is. When faith goes up, fear goes down. When fear goes up, faith goes down. Why are you acting like cowards, O ye of little faith? Oop, fear went up, cowardice went up, faith and believing went down. Okay? What do you need to do to fix that? I'm praying that God will give you a revelation today of your faith. And, and you, what you're going to hear the Lord tell you, if you're listening, is that your faith is fine. It's great. You need to remove the cowardice. Your faith is fine. Just remove the fear and doubt. That's the key to victory. you got to remove the fear and the doubt. Once you do that, your faith blooms. It blossoms. You can't be stopped. You can't lose. It's not possible. Keep it simple. You step out in faith with not, no doubts and no unbelief. You remove your fear. You remove your cowardice. And you, like the centurion, like the dying leper, you move forward and you win. You cannot lose. Following this formula in Matthew chapter 8. Now, here's something else very interesting in this section of text. Verse 26, it says, Then Jesus arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea. Imagine that. Now, that Greek word for rebuke there is pitamao. It means to charge or aggressively charge someone or command someone to stop doing something. Epitomao. That Greek word with Jesus was only used when he was rebuking Satan or demons. So this looks to me like Satan had something to do with that tsunami, which gives you an idea of his incredible power. And that power was clearly demonstrated in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. Satan has enormous power over the weather, people, nations, the whole nine yards. And it looks like in this verse, since the word rebuked was used, epitomao, it looks like this had something to do with Satan trying to drown Jesus and the disciples trying to drown Jesus and the disciples. He caught it. He rebuked the winds and the sea. Well, normally there's no reason to rebuke wind because it's not a person. There's no reason to rebuke the sea because that's not a person. But if a person's behind it, then this verse makes perfect sense. And then it says, there was a great calm. That is exactly what happens when you remove your cowardice and you remove your fears. You get what the leper got, complete healing, and his body was in a great calm. You got exactly what the centurion wanted, the spinal cord in the boy's neck or low back or whatever it was, was mended or cured. Spinal cord injuries are shockingly supernatural because the spinal cord can't be fixed by uh, doctors. It's so complicated. There's so many threads, neurons in spinal cord. There's no way to connect them all through surgery. It can't be done. They don't have a cure for spinal cord disabilities now. Then it says, last verse, verse 27, the men marveled. What Greek word is that? The same one again, thamazo. They were in a state of shock. Their jaw dropped. 
They said, what manner of man is this? That the winds and sea obey him. Yes, friend. There it is. You got it. Half a chapter of the miracle chapters, Matthew 8 and 9. And you can see how easy it is to get a miracle. How much God wants to give you a miracle. How much he cares about you. He wants to help you. He's ready to help you. Boom. He's ready to make a move on your life. But add those ingredients, would you? Remove your fears. Remove your cowardice. Wipe that yellow streak off your back. Come in aggressively like the centurion and the leper. Be strong. Step up. Fight back. Well, I don't know. I need to sit here in church. I need somebody to lay hands on me or give me a word. Okay? Listen, you're going to be, you're going to be sitting there until you drop dead. It's not going to happen. Get off your duff. Push your way in. Make your move. Take the logos with you. You can't lose. We can win this thing 100%. We can win this thing. Well, how can this possibly happen? Go to Facebook and go to my group, Blessings. There's a picture of the Deliverance Center on the front of that group page. Okay? Scroll down through the thing and see all these people that have been delivered and healed. They're just regular people like you and me. We're just regular folk. But what makes us special is not me, but I believe. Not you, but you believe. We're all believers. We're children of God. We, we're going to win this thing. There's no doubt about it. We can't lose. We can't lose. You just follow the simple formula. In the Bible, so simple, and you win. Okay? I'll see you Tuesday night at six o'clock Pacific time and Arizona time. Tuesday night. Um, it could be 5 p.m. Pacific time, as you know, with the time change. I'll see you there. Um, same thing on Wednesday night. Brother Rick and the ministry team will see you on the Zoom on six o'clock Wednesday night. And that's a 6 p.m. Arizona time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, you can send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I will send you a religious exemption. I will send you the miracle list, a step-by-step -step guide to being healed that works 100% of the time. I've never seen anybody not healed who actually did the miracle list. If you have questions or comments or suggestions for future shows, Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com. I love you, and I thank you for watching Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. See you next time.